Hi guys, in the previous section we looked at cross-site request forgery and how it can affect a user and how we can prevent that. In this section, Extra Measures for the Shop, we'll take a look at OASP Zap. We'll see what two-factor authentication is, we'll talk about weak passwords and phishing, clickjacking and finally wind up our course. In this particular video, OASP Zap will talk about various features of OASP Zap like plug and hack, fuzzing, and how we can scan for vulnerabilities using OASP Zap. OASP Zap is another vulnerability scanner, but it has some interesting features that I think we should look at. So first things first, you can find OASP Zap by going to the web applications and web application scanners, you can find it there, or you can simply type it in in command line, such as this. Now it does take a little bit to run, don't worry, if you've just clicked it in the menu, it does take a little while to set up because of the different things it's running. And as you can see, you can probably see it has Paros also running alongside with it to do certain capabilities. One of the things that I'm first going to look at here is the plug and hack option that we have available to us in Kali. And what you can do is to configure it, you can simply just click plug and hack, it will go to it, click set up and say I understand and enable. I already have the add-on installed, as well as that, if that isn't working correctly, you can also, in your preferences, change the network connection to localhost to 8080, and it should be okay, and then it'll be able to read what you're doing on your browser. So right now, we can see that nothing's here at all, and if we go to the alerts, which is fairly important if we want to know about vulnerabilities in this program, so the alert is there, and if we go down, and just refresh the page and go back to OS. We can see now it's loaded four, five alerts that it has here. So we have cross-domain JavaScript source inclusion. So I'm basically having a third-party JavaScript set of Google API, I believe that is. Yeah. Also, we have other things like content type and X-frame options. If we just go ahead and use the spider option here um, down below and We've already got it set as 119.168.1.3 because we're in that section. If we go over here, we'll obviously be scanning on the Google API site. We don't want that. We want to go on this host, so we highlight that. And then we'll click play, and it will start scanning. In the current folders, it already knows are available. So it will start to get other pieces as well. So the spider is done, and much like... Weef, we basically have a request and response that we can actually look at. So if we go back now and just enter login and put in sort of generic SQL error, we don't know what's happened here because of, like I said in previous videos, elements have gone in the way, but we do know that there's incorrect login details. If we go over to the OASP Zap and go on here, we'll see the course login. We can see it actually has it available here for us. It hasn't picked it up yet that it's a MySQL injection, but it has noted that there is an error because sometimes some of these errors can be caused in different ways other than SQL injection, so that is why it's currently an application error disclosure. But it's really a good idea that I like from OSP Zap that there's a thing called plug and hack where you can basically test out various things. It will log out everything that you have available to you and you're able to check back and look at the alerts that it has available to you in this section. So what we can do is we can also fuzz. Fuzzing is basically where we're just trying everything that's possible to see if it comes back with an error. So what you need to do for fuzzing is basically highlight where we want to go for fuzzing and click fuzz in the request and then we're going to choose SQL injection for this and I'm going to highlight SQL injection. I'm going to fuzz and it'll basically try different possibilities um, that it has available to it within that fuzzing table that it has. But really what we want to see is the response that it comes back with. Um, so we know that it is an SQL injection here. So if we look at a response, it's OK, it's 200 OK. But if we go down in the source code, we can see that it does have SQL injection there. And that's good if it's not working in one way and you're not sure how to do it another. You can just send a fuzzing and see what comes back successful or failed. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to simply just do an attack, which does take some time because it does various types of attacks on various inputs. So if we just click attack, what it will do is it will find it will spider, it will do all of this for us man automatically. And sometimes that isn't great and sometimes that is. That's why plug and hack and fuzzing is a good idea and why sometimes 
automated attack sometimes works. So right now we have eight alerts. If we just click attack and come back once that's done, we'll see what results have changed. So I've come back, it's about 15-20 minutes now since I started the scan. Obviously it'll be different depending on the size of the web application and it's found a lot more than it would normally. It, it's found a lot more, it's, it's got a 13 now instead of 9, um, found various exploits available to us and we can use them and also if we go into one much like Weave you can have a look in the the payload it provides and it also gives you a little bit of information the description of a cross-site scripting attack is available there. In this video we've understood how to set up plug and hack in OSAP. We configured it with a browser changing the proxy so that it could listen properly and this is great if we want to do a semi, I call it semi-manual sort of scan of a web application because you're basically getting alerts from the program from what you're interacting with but you can also test it by yourself manually without having to use scripts that are pre-made for a general application so you can do it in your own way but still get alerts which I think is a fairly interesting concept. We also reviewed some of the OS Zap features like plug and hack like fuzzing and also like spidering there is a large amount of uh, features in, in OS that, that can find vulnerabilities within a web application. In the next video, we'll be looking at two-factor authentication and how that can help users.